A lot of times when you're trying to learn a piece of music, most folks start with the left hand because it seems a logical place to go. That's where the chords are. That's where the melody is. And uh, sometimes it's even the more unfamiliar part of playing the, the guitar. But there are some styles where it probably makes sense to start with the right hand. Um, a friend of mine, the legendary Bowling Green Sean Cephas, um, taught me this about 30 years ago, something called the Piedmont Roll. And it's a really kind of cool way to introduce yourself to alternate picking and to playing the melody as well as the bass at the same time. Uh, rather than to try an alternating bass, for example, and then try to come in with a melody, or to try to play the melody first and then add a bass, the roll allows you to sort of do both simultaneously. And uh, it's a picking pattern. Now this pattern varies according to the chord shape you're playing out of, but the idea is that you have an alternating bass and then you are also hitting your two treble strings. And sometimes you'll add the third string depending on your melodic needs, but um, it's sort of like this. And we'll slow this down for you so you get an idea of what's happening. You're playing uh, this pattern like this. The inside strings go first. So you go two, four. Now when that gets boring, and boredom is a great friend of uh, guitar players, you can add the one string. If you get lost, just go back to the start of the pattern, two, four. And no matter how long I've been playing this stuff, sometimes I'll drift over and start playing the third string or whatever. But the idea is just that, right? You add the one. And eventually you add the sixth string. So it becomes two, four, one, six. Get it up to speed, it's a little bit easier to keep it straight. Now all this is while you're holding an E chord. Let's say if you're playing in the key of E, what you want to do is when you go to that four chord, which is the A, you want to adjust. So the bass is now on the fifth string. So instead of going two, four, one, six, you're going Two, four, one, five, or two, three, one, five, like this. When you go back to the E, it goes back to the sixth string. Now because this is a roll, don't think of it as being, you know, one string or one note following another, but think of it as literally being a roll. You can emphasize any note that you want to in that roll. So if you wanted to emphasize the sixth string, it, if you want to emphasize the fourth string, first string. It's really up to you, right? It depends on what your needs are rhythmically and melodically. So, if you're in the key of E, obviously you've got the nice big fat E in the bass on the sixth string, and you're alternating between the sixth string and the fourth string sort of letting the uh, first and second string come along for the ride. When you go to that four chord, which is the A, you 
you just adjust because your bass is now on the fifth string and you're alternating between the five string and the third string or the G. When you go back to the one chord, just sort of stretch it back out so that it's alternating between the sixth string and the fourth string. Now, a B7 has a bass on the five string, so you can do exactly the same thing you did on the fourth string. Four chord. Back to the one chord. Now this pattern, it works regardless of what shape you're playing. You, you need to think of it not so much as being how does it react to the chord, because there are lots of ways to make that chord, but how does it relate to the shape? Wherever the bass is, uh, you would adjust your thumb to go like 5-3 as opposed to 6-4. Um, Let me give you an example. Let's say if you're playing an E uh, chord, but out of a C shape, your bass is obviously now on the five string, so you're doing that five, three, one, two, as opposed to the six, but you... But because the E still has the bass on the sixth string, you could play that, that shape. But let's say if you were playing in the key of C, play that open E against that C, eh, it doesn't sound that good, right? So you go three, three, five, right? However, if you decided to add that G onto a C, sort of alternate, you could go, it would sound great. Six string against the four string. So the, really, the only adjustment is where the bass is. If you're in the key of D, for example, you might find yourself going four, four, two, right? Because that's where the, the bass is against that open D string. So this has a lot of, of um, variation and a lot of possibilities. Um, it can sound like country music. It could sound like um, Piedmont, obviously. Yeah. How you use it is really up to you, but it's a really great tool to get you to doing alternating bass and implying the melody. Um, just sort of as a brief aside, if you were uh, holding a C chord, playing this pattern, wouldn't take much. A little bit of adjustment to do a melody, so. Elizabeth Cotton's freight train really comes just about out of doing the melody moves that you have to make, but you don't have to really do a different role. To get alternating bass and melody out of the same thing. So that's one of the things that makes this Piedmont role such a versatile way uh, finger picking a guitar. Uh, it's hard enough to try to finger pick a guitar as it is, but if you start to think of it, and there, there are different schools, there are different ways of viewing anything. Uh, like I'm a visual artist. I know that there are visual artists who think in terms of lines. 
Um, and there are visual artists who think in terms of shapes. I discovered I'm a shape guy. So there are people who think in terms of tab or the note, how, you know, this note follows that note on a page. And then there are people who think in terms of get to the chord and improvise within the chord. I'm a chord guy. If you're built as a chord person, then the idea of getting to a chord and then being able to play out of that chord and then just doing what you need to do is a, a good way of learning. So my approach to playing the guitar is often to get to the chord and then find the pentatonic um, pattern that I need within the chord in order to learn how to play the song as opposed to just this note leads into this note, th leads into this note. I find it's a more versatile um, form and it gives me a lot of flexibility across styles, which is what I'm interested in. I'm not necessarily interested in playing something like Robert Johnson exactly. I'm interested in knowing he's playing a D7 shape at the ninth fret, and he's playing a A shape at the, at the uh, second fret, or that he's playing a D7 shape, an E shape, and that's how I get from point A to point B. So for me, Piedmont Roll was a godsend 30 years ago to understand that I could get the right hand to go on autopilot and I could concentrate on what was happening with the left hand, right? So this thing, it works, um, it's kind of abstract when you just sort of do it as, a, as an exercise. When you apply it to a song, that's when you really start to find out how versatile and how powerful a tool it is to let the right hand do what it does and then to let the left hand do what it does and the two of them coming together is what makes it music.